So you be told to determine the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to 3t cos h t from first principle. So if you say the Laplace transform of a function f of t from first principle is given by the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t exponential negative st dt. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Are we together? Yeah. So put your f of t, so you are integrating from 0 to infinity. What is f t? It is 3. 3t three cos cos h t exponential negative st d, dt. Are we together? Yeah. Meaning whether it's f of t we replace the value of f of t, which will be given to be 3t cos h t, isn't it? Are we together? Mm -hmm. Then we start the business of the day, isn't it? So before we start the business of the day, what do we do? You see the process, it was coming from that, the shape here, and the first thing we do is to, we eliminate this cos, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. We eliminate that, the cos. So, I start. What is cos ht? It is going to be, remember 3 is a constant, you can factorize outside, it is 3 integral from 0 to infinity of t cos ht exponential negative std, negative std dt. Now, you can start by eliminating cos or you can start by applying the shift theorem, isn't it? Anything, you can do anything, does not matter what you start with and what goes next, okay? Yeah. So it means there we have 3 integral from 0 to infinity, then cos, <coughs> cos h t, then t you join with exponential negative isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, that is what we were doing in the shift theorem. Okay, yes. So that is t, exponential, negative s t, isn't it? Yeah. In bracket, then dt. So t will join the there. <coughs> then when you join it here, you see, when you are differentiating, you go, you go, now here you have, this is the Laplace of f of t of course. You can remember when you were differentiating, in a smaller bracket there, when you take exponential negative st alone, isn't it? When you take exponential negative st alone. So when you have exponential negative st, when you differentiate this with respect to x, when you differentiate it with respect to s, you are going to get exponential negative s t will remain the way it is. So when you differentiate it with respect to x, it means negative t is the constant, isn't it? Yes. When you differentiate s, you get 1, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So negative t becomes the constant. See, you differentiate the outer function and the inner function and express them as a product. General, isn't it? Yes. So when you are differentiating with respect to s, it means negative t is the constant, isn't it? Yes. So negative t is the constant, then you differentiate s, you get 1. You multiply with that. With that, isn't it? Yes. But differentiating the outer function exponential negative s t remains the way it is, isn't it? Yes. It is the inner function which is giving you negative t. Are you seeing that? Yes. With respect to s, is that okay? Yes. So if you multiply both sides by negative, you can see you have negative d d s of exponential negative s t to be t exponential negative s t. Meaning we are using the shift theorem along from first principle, isn't it? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Look at the procedure very well. So, substitute that there, what do you now get? <coughs> we have 3 integral from 0 to infinity cos 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 h t then from shape theorem, what is t exponential negative s t? It is negative d over dx d over dx of Exponential negative s t. Exponential negative s t. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the beauty of Laplace transform. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see why this step is simple because I'm going to explain it, okay? Yes. So it means negative d over ds you take outside because it is now with respect to t. Meaning this one is not affected in any way in the integral, isn't it? Yes. Because it is with respect to it. So when you take negative d over ds outside times 3, you get negative 3 d dds of the integral from 0 to infinity of what? Of course, of course, ht exponential negative std dt. Ladies and gentlemen, now look at what has happened there. What has happened is that we've eliminated t. Are you seeing that? Yes. And eliminating t, we were saying when you add t times f of t, the Laplace transform of t raised to power n times f of t was giving you negative 1 raised to power n 
Bn over Dsn of the Laplace transform of f of t. Meaning if you take 3 cos h t to be there, 3 cos h to be there for t, then our n here, because it was just 1t, are you seeing? Yeah. When it was just 1t, meaning n is 1, meaning you are going to reduce negative 1 dBs to negative 1 dBs, then you've eliminated t, the rest cos h t remains. 3 cos h t remains inside, you've eliminated t by negative, negative dBs. Are you seeing all that simple? Are you seeing it? Yes. Yeah, the idea is to eliminate that t. Are you getting the idea? Yes. That is the only shape theorem which does that, isn't it? Yes. Good. So having done that, we can now integrate this, meaning we get rid of cos h t, isn't it? Yes. And getting rid of cos h t, we've seen cos h t, cos is the real part of the Euler's yes. equation, isn't it? Yes. So when you get rid of cos h t, here we have negative, we are now going to have what? Negative 3 dds of the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of exponential j a t exponential negative s t dt. Because the real part of exponential dAT is what was given you cos HT. And you can see your A is what? Cos AT. Your A is what? So it is exponential JAT. Have you seen that? Have you seen where now the other equation is coming in? Isn't it? So we are only going to be concentrated on, on the real part of this integral, isn't it? So you use what? You use no so indices to join them, isn't it? I do that. So we have negative 3 dds of integral from 0 to infinity, same base with multiplication sign, you do what? You add the power, isn't it? Yes. And remember, when you are integrating, what should be outside? Negative t should be outside the bracket, isn't it? So if you factorize out negative t here, what will you remain? If you factorize out negative t, yes, you remain with s. Meaning you can make s to start because it's positive, isn't it? Yes. If you remove negative t, yes, you remain with negative 8 j, isn't it? Good. You remain with minus j8. Then we have our negative t outside. Because by definition, negative t, we want to be outside by definition, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. So if you remove negative t, you remain with negative 8 j. If you remove negative t, you remain with positive s. So positive can start, isn't it? So there we factorize out negative t. Are we together? Yes. With respect to, to t. Ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the integrating that is one touch, one touch. Because what you are checking is the derivative, isn't it? The derivative of the inner function must be a constant. Because here you are integrating with respect to t, meaning t is the variable. So the derivative of this inner function, the whole of this negative into s minus d it is a constant. Senior. So it means when you are going to differentiate, you are going to get what? <coughs> 1. So what do we get? We have negative 3 d d s. If you integrate an exponential function, it remains the way it is. Exponential negative into s minus j h d. Then you divide by that constant of the inner function because you see that derivative was a constant, isn't it? See that constant is when you differentiate t, you remain with the whole of that. See that's the constant. So you divide it with that constant which is negative s minus J -H. Minus j8. Then you put your limits of integration, which is from 0 to infinity. infinity. Are you seeing how that is simple? You are integrating with respect to meaning the derivative here, the whole of this is a constant, only t is a variable. If you differentiate, you get 1 times this constant, meaning this is the constant. And remember, integration, you are dividing with the constant. Integrate, differentiation, you are multiplying with zero. Is that okay? Yes. Good. Then from there, you apply. You apply your, your natural knowledge. You see, this constant you bring outside. See, this negative will disappear with this negative. See, there? see negative, now your negative is positive. Then here you have 3 over. See, in the denominator will be this 3 over s minus. There's the, the something we've not written. We are, we are only interested in the real part of this, isn't it? It is the only real part we are interested in, meaning the real, the real part of that is what we are interested in, isn't it? So remove this constant outside, what will you have? You cannot remove it outside, it is the real which remains there, so you have 3, 3, D, D, S of the real part of what? 1 over, remember J is there, you cannot remove out, the, the word real means you, you stay hold this one inside it, isn't it? 1 over s minus j h into 
upper limit minus lower limit. So upper limit start. Remember, you remove this one outside. This is what we're remaining with, isn't it? So if you put infinity where it is, remember the whole of this is a constant, isn't it? So if you put infinity, it's like you have exponential negative infinity. Are you seeing that? And we will see, we saw that exponential negative infinity is zero. So it means upper limit is zero. And when you put zero there, zero will take everything to be exponential zero. Then you get one. Because anything raised to power zero is one. So upper limit minus lower limit is zero minus one. See there? Yeah. So what do you get there? What is zero minus one? Negative? One. Negative one. So continue. I right, continue from there. What do we now have? That one is equal to three into the real part of real part of where is our DDS? It is three DDS of the real part of what? The real part of 0 minus 1 meaning negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 in the numerator, isn't it? Real part of negative 1 over denominator we have S minus S minus J8, isn't it? And you know you have to rationalize the denominator, meaning you are multiplying with the complex conjugate, isn't it? Are we together? So when you are rationalizing the denominator, complex conjugate, you only change the sign in between, isn't it? It is this negative sign you change. So it is going to be S plus J8, then you have to do the same in the numerator. It is like you are multiplying with one because that doesn't be that, isn't it? We are rationalizing that denominator. So having done that, what do we now have? Negative one comes out, that's a constant, isn't it? See, negative one can be brought outside here. So that we have negative three, isn't it? Negative three, DDS of the real part of so in the numerator we just remain with S plus plus J8, isn't it? Yeah. Then in the denominator, a difference of two squares. So there you grab your, your S squared and plus plus 64. Because a difference of two squares, it is S squared minus J8 squared. S squared, A squared is four, J squared is negative one. Negative the negative is what? Positive, meaning when you are saying when you are multiplying a complex number with this conjugate, you simply get x squared plus y squared, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you can see our x here is s and our y is 8. Because it is in the form x plus jy times x minus minus jy. So you can see the x is s and the, the y is 8. Is it yes. So x squared plus y squared, so it is simply s squared plus a squared. Yes. Are we together? Yes. yes. From complex, from complex numbers, isn't it? Yes. 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 Now having done that, you separate it. So separate it. Negative 3 dds. Remember, even if you have, you would have left that negative inside, this is no problem because it will be negative this and this. You would have still factor it out outside at the end to obey the Laplace rule, rules, isn't it? Yeah, so add off, now separate the real with the imaginary, the real is S over, they are sharing the same denominator. S over S squared plus 64, then it is plus J8 over S squared plus 64. Are you seeing? Are we together? So you can see this is the real, this is the imaginary. This is the imaginary because there's J in front of it. Remember J times J, you get your J. You separated the two parts, common denominator, isn't it? It is S over this and J8 over this. Then you remove J outside, you want to see the term, isn't it? So, between these two terms, which one is real? The real is the one you pay. This one without J, isn't it? Are we together? Very good. So, having noted, having identified the real part, the real part is this bracket without J. Meaning the imaginary part will have been this bracket, isn't it? So, we are only interested in the real part there. So, we have negative 3. D, D, S of what? S over s squared plus 64 because we get a read of the read the word read it means we pick the real part only are you seeing that yeah. are we together yes so we have done that from first principles so what is left there is very simple just the ordinary quotient rule isn't it <coughs> because we are differentiating with respect to s meaning we have s over that quotient rule isn't it so in quotient rule when you have y is u over v then the derivative the derivative is you start with differentiating the numerator, isn't it? So it is u prime, then you multiply by v, isn't it? Then it is minus u interchange, see there? Then it is minus v prime, you multiply by u. You start by differentiating the numerator, u prime, see there? 
It's when you multiply by V, then it is minus. We saw how it was coming about from the product rule, isn't it? Yes. Then it is over V. Yes. Very good. So start substituting. Start here. What is in the numerator? This is U over V, meaning U is what is in the numerator. It's S, isn't it? Are you seeing that? Yes. U is S. So if you differentiate U, if you differentiate S, you get what? Send it I go here, what is your V? V is what is in the denominator. V is S squared plus S squared plus 64. See there? It's S squared plus 64. Then if you differentiate V, if you differentiate S squared, you get 2S. See there? So from here, if you substitute them in the formula, what do we get? Remember, we are only differentiating once, BDS. Meaning we are differentiating it once is enough, isn't it? Y prime, single prime. See, this was just for the case of a formula. But in, in our case, it was not why it was t, see Because it was a function of t, so we can talk of t prime, we can talk of t being u over, but I'm using y because of the general methodology, isn't it? This one is another ass. What we are interested in is the answer here. You know, you are not supposed to mean write this one, so I'm just using them as a guide, isn't it? Yeah, those are other ass. So what do we have here? We have negative 3 in the bracket. We are supposed to have u prime times v. So go, u prime times v is 1 times s squared plus 64. Then it is minus, isn't it? v prime times u. What is your v prime? 2s times s. You get 2s squared. squared. Then it is over v squared. What is your v? Your v is s squared plus 64. Then that one will be the whole of it. Is v it has been what? Square. It has been squared. You are done. You are done. If you like, you can simplify. Those who like simplifying things, you can now come in. It is now your work to simplify. But here you are done. See there? Yes. So what is the need of simplifying this thing? There is no need. But you can see s squared minus 2s squared is negative. Negative s squared. So we have negative 3 outside. Then negative s squared plus 64, isn't it? Yes. See here we s squared minus 2s squared is negative s squared. Yes. Plus 64, isn't it? Then the denominator, we have s squared plus 64 squared. So if you take negative 3 inside, you get 3 negative and negative positive 3 squared, isn't it? Yeah. Then minus negative 3 times positive 64 is negative. One I get over. What do you have? Huh? 192. Then it is over s squared plus 64 squared. And you are done. 9 marks on the spot. Remember, it is looking long because I'm explaining, isn't it? Yes. But now the moment you go and sit down and you do and you take another example of that matter and you do and you take another example in that case and you do, it is no longer a problem. Have you seen how these things are done? Mm -hmm. Here yeah, is just to give you direction. I'm not teaching you how to do this thing, I'm giving you the direction on how you are supposed to do that. You have to learn the difference, okay? Yes, Good. That is how to handle such kind of problems.